So, your church asked you to record part of the worship service on your cell phone from your house. My name's Stephen, and I've been helping churches do this for most of the COVID crisis. I've been doing it at my own church and for the churches of a few other people that I know. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna help you have reasonable standards and understand how to get the most out of your cell phone camera. I'm gonna give you a, fir a few firm rules, actually one firm rule, and then a couple of quick tips that will improve the quality of your cell phone camera dramatically. Under the right conditions, your cell phone camera can record video that's almost as good as fancy expensive cameras. What I'm gonna to explain to you is how to get those right conditions uh, given what most of us have to work with in our actual houses. So, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a few things. I'm often going to literally show you what my, um, show you my uh, cell phone so that you can see what small changes look like. The first thing I wanna tell you is the only firm rule of recording with your cell phone. And that is about what direction you hold your phone or you set your, you're probably not gonna hold it, how you orient your phone as you're doing your recording. The correct answer is like this. You want it with the long side on the bottom and then the skinny side over on the sides, right? Why? Because that's what a TV looks like. Your TV has the long part on the bottom, skinny part on the side. That's what a computer screen looks like. The long part's on the bottom and the skinny part is on the side. Now, to be technical, to be precise, your cell phone will record if you hold it like this. The trouble is, it's going to be almost impossible to make that look good in your church's worship service. When I receive footage that's held like this, I have to do one of two things, one of three things, really. One thing is I can just put the footage in the middle of the screen, and then there's these giant black bars on the side, and it looks kind of bad, and people feel like, why is this video cropped out? Where, why aren't they just showing me the whole frame? Because people think there's a whole frame there, they wanna see it. The other option is I can do this, where I just pick one part of the frame and I zoom in and I try and make that work, but it's almost impossible to make that work without really losing a lot of quality. So the truth is, the third thing that will happen in my case, if I receive your footage, is I will probably send it back and ask you to redo it with your phone held in the proper orientation. And that's a waste because even if your phone was in the wrong orientation, I know you worked hard on what you did and you did all your stuff really well, you just had your phone in the wrong orientation. So don't make this mistake. Make sure your phone is laid down like this as it records. The most substantial concrete tip I have for you is that to make your camera and your cell phone look like a professional camera, you want lots and lots of soft light. Now I'm gonna show you this outside so that you can see the point most dramatically, and then I'm gonna take you inside and show you how to actually pull this off inside of your house. So unfortunately, I've picked a cloudy day to do this, and so the effect will be less pronounced than, than it would be. But if you'll imagine with me just a little bit, I think you'll see my point. Now if I, were, I came out here, I came way out into my front yard here, Normally, with a harsh sun, there'd be harsh sun coming down, and it'd be very bright. It'd have lots of light, technically speaking, but it would be harsh light because the light's coming directly from one point, the sun. So that's what creates harsh light, and that's why there's all these often shadows under a person's uh, eyeballs and things like that, and in their nose and things like that when they stand in the sun. So that's called harsh light, even though it's really bright. But on a bright sunny day, if I stepped onto my porch, I would step right into the line of the shade and all of a sudden you would get light very much like what you see here. It's very bright, it's, uh, it's great looking, it's fairly smooth light, all things considered. And uh, that, that's exactly what your camera hopes for, right there. So now let me take you inside and show you how to pull that off inside your house. Now let me show you how to make use of that principle when you're inside your house. And the secret is windows. Now you're looking at this video right now, you're seeing, uh, you're looking at my cell phone right now, and you're looking at this video and you're thinking, man, that window sure does look terrible. That's because a camera isn't as good as the human eye at seeing bright things and dim things and kind of figuring it out. Cameras aren't that good at that, relatively speaking. But look what happens when I turn around. The camera adjusts a little, 
all of a sudden we've got great looking footage. You see the light from the window is shining onto my face. It's giving me big, soft, bright light. And it looks great. I look odd standing in the room, but it looks great. And uh, assuming my kitchen is clean behind me, uh, I'll have a great looking shot. So you can do this. Typically speaking in your house, the best way to get great looking footage is to go find a big window and set up in front of it so that the light from the window is shining on your face. One more tip from you, and this is about where the camera should be up and down. Typically speaking, you want your camera basically at eye level. Now, given that most of us don't have tripods and stuff like that at home, sometimes that can be difficult to pull off. So let me show you what I've done here. If I, my camera is right here, and I've just got it. I found a step stool that was about the right height, and I put a big stack of books, and then the camera's leaned up against the books, right? You'll notice I've also sat in front of the big window, so I've got that great window light, and you'll notice that I've also turned the light off behind me. That's a wall sconce there. If I turn that on, it actually, it doesn't look great. Real high-end cameras can do that and look cool. Most of our cell phones can't do that and look cool. So, uh, something like this, you'll notice that eye level is uh, really good. Let me show you what happens, and I get footage like this sometimes. Sometimes people, they, they can't quite figure it out, so they'll, I've had some people submit footage where the, it looks like the phone is literally on the ground. And that, I mean, that looks really, really bad. Or sometimes, I've occasionally seen it where it's really high, they must have found some shelf and they look up at it. And that's, that's not great either. While we're on the subject, let me show you one more thing that happens when you set your phone down on the ground. Or you set it down low. Sometimes there's a light up there and you'll see that the light washes out uh, the image. Look, my shirt is blue and there's not a lot of color left in the shirt. The camera's trying to uh, compensate for really bright things in a room that's maybe not as bright and it looks terrible. So, get everything eye level and try to not have any really bright lights behind the camera. Thanks. Finally, here's my last tip. You've probably been asked to submit your video recording in a specific way. Probably your church office asked you to send it to Dropbox or Google Drive, or if you have an iPhone, maybe use Google's Photos app. That's a lot more important to do that in the specific way that you were asked to do that than it might seem. Other ways of sending videos reduce the quality of the video, which, which is fine. If you're texting a video to your friend who's gonna look at it on a cell phone, the truth is lowering the video quality isn't that big of a deal. But for what we're gonna do, we want every last bit of quality that we can get. So it's important to follow the specific directions that your church has asked of you. Finally, just remember what you're doing. You're creating a part of a worship service in your house during a global pandemic, and you're doing your best. Nobody expects professional results. I hope these results can't, these uh, tips and that one rule, remember that one rule, can be helpful to you as you try to give better quality to uh, your church and your faith community. Um, if it's helpful to you, please notice there are two more videos in this series. One video is on how to improve the acoustics in your recording space. There's not a lot we can do in houses, but I've got a few tips for you. And there's one more video if you really aren't quite sure how to record video on your cell phone and then send that to your church, I've got a video that uh, hopes to help you with that. All right, good luck out there.